welcome to my channel electronics and wheel and thank you for your support so yesterday i have uploaded one video the journey of sonali tractor and how one lic agent became the billionaire uh, he has created around 2.4 billion dollar of um, uh, you know wealth and the company has the value right now and it was indeed an inspirational story at the age of 60 here he has started this company and after having multiple failure he has become successful in this journey but i got one feedback uh, from one of our subscriber that uh, this particular video does not match with this channel and it does not <coughs> resonance with this channel so please continue with the technical thing so i will uh, take care of this thing and uh, already i have taken down this particular video because uh, someone is not liking so th there is no point of making this type of video uh, but there are person who has liked also but I have understood that I will keep this particular channel for the technical things. So moving to the R topic. So last time one video I have created on the relay. So in that I have asked one question uh, that how many you people want the PDC basics power distribution system. So I go to reply that please create the PDC basics video and one from the Srikanth that power distribution please upload the power distribution video. So I am going to create the power distribution video but as you know the power distribution is nothing but that your source to load that power is transferring and your source is for the power is battery and the alternator battery and alternator so in alternator we are already discussing the charging system if you see uh, i will post particular link of that video where i have discussed about the charging system and alternator so i have discussed about the basic of alternator and today i will create i will show you the charging system wiring diagram where you will understand that how this charging system or alternator is working in our vehicle and then we will start discussing about the fuse box that is nothing but the power distribution here we will discuss about the primary fuse box then secondary fuse box and then how it is transferring from there to the loads so let's start with the charging system wiring diagram uh, which we have left in the last video so this is about the char charging system diagram if you see so first i i will discuss this particular video in a two cases the first case where our power is supplying from here from battery to this particular fuse box that is primary power distribution primary uh, fuse box and then it is going to alternator and then it is going to our fuse box i will i will show you what does it mean it is going to alternator basically it never travel the current never travels from battery to alternator the reason is uh, uh, very clear i will i will explain this particular reason why i am saying so then second case we will discuss that how alternator is providing or charging our battery in this direction and then our uh, alternator is providing the current to the loads and that is going to fuse box and then our real power distribution will start from the fuse box so i hope you will be with me and i'll just erase this then i will just discuss first time that what are the components in the charging system first is the battery then you have your fuse box that is the midi fuse then you have this splice then you have the alternator here i have taken the two terminal alternator to first alternator terminal is this one you can see here where my alternator positive terminal is connected to battery and to the load through the splice this is splice i will show you that how this current will flow from here to this particular load and this battery and then i have shown one more picture here you can see this is the connector so here i uh, yes, uh, last video I told you that this might be a four pole connector or two pole connector depending on how you are developing that particular component. So suppose I want that particular function in my cluster. Cluster you already know that particular function what you need that whether my battery is charging or not. So this particular thing will be given by this particular indication. If you can see in the cluster this is the type of indication which will come in your cluster if your battery is not charging. If your battery is charging, then there will be no indication. This indication will only come when your battery is not charging to show you. It would be always in red color. So these indication or we call in engineering term, it is telltale. So when you when you discuss in the engineering term, we call it telltale. But in layman term, we call it the indication. 
these indication have particular standards and definition that which particular symbol should be in which color so you will always see this particular symbol in the cluster in the red red uh, color only you will not see in any other color like green or the yellow color so these are the standard which are followed so this particular connector will be having suppose second pin this particular pin in the alternator is giving the indication to the instrument cluster that if your battery is not charging then it will give the indication to the cluster that is nothing but the charging indication then this is your fuse box where you have the different different fuses for the different different function like headlamp then brake light ac cluster horn seat movement if you see this all here which uh, fuse box i have created here all the supply is coming from the battery if you see here the direct battery suppose if your alternator is not working then battery will supply all the current to the load but is this the right way to distribute the power so that question we will discuss in the next video where we will discuss in detail what is the ignition supply accessory supply should we take this all the supply suppose headlamp i give one example headlamp it is okay suppose your vehicle is not starting and still you want to own the headlamp then it is okay to give the supply from the battery but uh, your brake light or your seat movement should you give this all these to supply or load to the battery the answer is no i will show you that how to distribute these loads into the specific one in the next video so let's understand first so in this fuse box there would be many things like you can see here these are the fuses then you can see the relays these are the relays these are the midi and maxi fuse mega fuse okay that that will also see in the detail so two cases i just want to discuss here the first case is when your battery your alternator is not working alternator is not working is not working and when alternator is not working when your engine is not running your you have not started your vehicle engine is off or alternator itself is not working okay so in that condition what will happen all the supply will go from the battery so i'll show you how it will go so you can see i have drawn one line here so this is the path which will follow from here to here and then it will go to the loads this is the case number one then second case is when your alternator is working and your engine has already started the alternator will work only when your engine is started because your alternator is connected with your engine pulley and then it generates the electricity so in that case what will be the condition the case two if you see from here this is the alternator output from alternator output the current will flow to this particular path which will go to fuse box and then it will charge to the battery through this so this is our splice through this splice it will go to this one and it will go to the loads the current will go to the loads so this is the uh, this is the flow of the current when your alternator is working but you can see that i have given here the splice but you can say that okay i do not want this splice like this i will give one terminal here on alternator and i will take one wire to the fuse box and i will charge directly to the battery like this okay i am not giving from this one i will show you this particular situation in the uh, next slide so this also you can do it is always depends on you how you want to draw your circuit but it should be follow the design specification and the uh, you know what are the pros and cons when you are designing like i have told you in this condition like if you are giving suppose brake lights and the seat movement directly to the uh, from the battery then you can give but what is the uh, pros and what is the cons you have to check what is the pros there is no pros only cons is there what is the disadvantage when you give the brake light and seat movement all all the loads to the battery then there is a dark current is there always flow from the battery and that dark current what it does that battery will discharge so it will affect overall circuit 
performance and overall battery performance if you give all the loads from the battery so this is the console so you have to understand what is the problem when you are designing in such a way so i hope you are clear what i am trying to say in the charging system and uh, all the uh, uh, all the uh, issues which i uh, i am trying to address so this is your normal battery this is your midi fuse it will be like this i will tell you also that why i have taken the 200 amps so it always depends on the alternator rating suppose my alternator rating is 150 amps then i will go to 200 amps or 175 amps then i will go to 200 amps of fuse midi midi or mega fuses okay so you have to take care of all these consideration then only you you can decide these fuse value so here in alternator case i will tell you the condition also generally in fuse selection we try to finalize our fuse value nominal current into 1 in 1.35 but in alternator case we don't follow this particular uh, way i will tell you why uh, what is the reason behind that ki why we don't follow that uh, no nominal current into 1.35 the fuse value for the alternator because see alternator is the ultimate source in your system and it will not suppose my alternator is rated 150 amps then it is not going beyond your uh, 150 amps the current will not then what is the need of giving this particular factor you can go even 160 amps or 175 amps that suppose if the my current goes beyond this 150 or 175 amps then my fuse will be blown so that is the reason that we don't follow in alternator case that 1.3 by 0.5 multiplication factor for the fuse value or 1.25 it depends on the uh, oems how you uh, how the oems are following but uh, this is the uh, you know typical value of this particular factor so i hope this circuit you got the understanding i'll just show you one more thing that how in physically how it would be so this is my battery here you can see to the starter solenoid which i have already told you in the last video that one particular connect connection would be from battery to starter solenoid then this is your battery then this is the same fuse which i have shown you in the circuit that is midi fuse to 200 amps midi fuse and it is this is how this particular connection is made okay so wire gauge we will discuss here most probably you will understand that here is the Uh, higher csa is used how much csa we are using like 60 or uh, 16 or uh, 20 or uh, 25 mm square that we will discuss in detail based on the current but as of now you understand that higher csa would be there and it the fuse will be like this this is our casing then this particular wire will be connected to the alternator b positive terminal and this is the alternator you know it is going to the alternator output then this this particular one wire separate wire we have taken here and if you see this separate wire it is going to splice and then it is going to alternator wire then this splice is going to the uh, this particular wire is going from splice to fuse box this is our fuse box and from fuse box you have the different different loads so this is how the overall um, overall uh, Uh, circuits need to be drawn and how it is physically so what will happen suppose when your battery is working so in that case what will happen it will the current will flow like this and it will go like this then uh, this is the case one then second case when your alternator um, is start running then what it will do it will charge your battery through this path and it will connect like this so you can say this thing that here that the current can come like this as well right so i will explain this thing so most of the uh, oems they don't go like this they go direct to the battery throw the some fuse uh, throw some separate fuse not the single fuse and but they will have this particular connection when alternator is running then it should charge your battery and it should go to loads so in this case also if you see that alternator is giving when it will start it will give the sorry it will when alternator will 
start and generate the DC current, then it will go like this to the loads and this to the battery. So, this is how our alternator or charging circuit works.